everyone. Welcome back to Hello Church. This is season three. Season three of Hello Church. And you might notice we have a, a new set. So we've kind of upgraded just a little yes, bit. Yes, we did. Thank you, David, and our production team. Yeah. I'm I haven't changed shirts since uh huh season two. I'm still yeah. wearing the same shirt. So And it sinks because it's really hot in Texas. It I smells. Know. You can't smell it, audience, but it but smells. It's there. <laughs> so we took a little bit of break. Yeah. A little bit of a break. We went on a sabbatical. A sabbatical. Um most of the summer. And did you do anything fun during the summer? I know. I mean, at, we worked here, right? So if we call moving fun, yeah, then yeah. I did lots of fun things. Yeah, the box workout, lifting yes. the boxes oh, and putting man. them back down. Well, so we mo- plan. we moved into a new house, and three days after we moved in, our AC goes out mm. in the middle of July. Yeah, about a hundred. 102, 101. So that was like neat. That. Yeah. Yeah. I told the kids it was like a hell illustration, you know? Mm. Downstairs is heaven. Upstairs <laughs> is hell. There get, you go. <laughs> get your lives right with Jesus, folks. Uh, our AC went out for a little bit. It was about a week and a half of just not funness. Yeah. And so uh, there's that. We're, we're going with our team, our ministry pass team. Yeah. On a retreat to Montana, so that's kind of the big thing of the summer. Though it's yeah. happening towards the end of the summer, we've got you know what, like five, four or five people in office, and then we've got a group of people outside Remote, the yeah. office, just kind of all around the country. And so we're all going to meet up. So that's good. Like that's yeah. going to be a nice little like send off to the summer and uh, get ready for the fall. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. So last season, season two of Hello Church was about the sermon. This season mm-hmm. is about the service. Now, yeah. you don't have to listen to season two to uh, listen to season three. Are we yeah, going to appreciate yeah. or understand? Yes. It's not like an MCU movie where you have to watch right. 27 things to understand it. We didn't, we did do have, we did have an end credits. We should have at least, right? Okay. For yeah. season two. Yeah, we should have. We both As walk a, out and it's like a teaser and all I'd that. wear an eye patch. <laughs> Let's say season three is about the service. <laughs> uh, but this one, uh, it's, it is about the service. And we realize that there are a lot of different types of people yeah. uh, who are watching this. You might call it a, a gathering. You might call it your Sunday service. Maybe you do it on a, on a Saturday night or Sunday afternoon based on your schedule, uh, your city. Let me just kind of give you an idea, at least where I'm at in all of this. When we, when we talk about the service, and we're going to talk about all the different elements of the service this season, whether it's offering or just the setting or look of the service, uh, this really isn't about having like the coolest service. It's it's not necessarily even about having everything planned out to the minute or or to the second. But what it's about is, hey, how can we take this big gathering where we see uh, more people together than we do at small groups or anything else we do. How can we take that and how can we really just try to uh, make it better or more conducive to the gospel being preached and just community with other believers? So that's that's really what it's about. So whether you come from uh, a denomination that's more liturgical, maybe you come from a very hip, cool uh, church, whatever it is, I think church you're gonna planner, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be able to take some nuggets from this season, and I think it's I think it's gonna help you. I think it'll help me as I think through all this. We've been doing research and talking about it, and so I think it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I think regardless of the style of your service, right? Planning is universal, and so it can help us all as we prepare to facilitate really a worship gathering with with a body of mm-hmm. believers right so we want to be organized in that and so the the first episode that we're today we're going to be talking about how to plan your services with purpose yeah. and i love this quote by dwight d eisenhower and he said in preparing for battle i have always found that plans are useless but planning is indispensable and there's three thoughts i have mm-hmm. so planning gives you focus Planning allows you to be flexible with that focus, and planning allows you to be creative without losing that focus. So the plan really helps us focus our theme and our efforts in one direction as as a team. And so, yeah, the plan can change, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, it's important that you do plan. I, I remember experience. You know, I grew up in this church, and I would say our services were about an hour and a half to two hours, but. 
uh, our church for sure, you know, I was on staff there later in life and the pastor, uh, the, you know, he's, he's a good guy, but he just planning was like almost ungodly. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't want to put the Holy Spirit in a box. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of their mantra. And I, I went to be on staff at a church that was equivalent in size, and they planned everything. And it wasn't like planned down to the minute where if the Holy Spirit's going to move, yeah. it's going to move right you know, on the seven yeah. minute mark. No, it wasn't like that. Where people are praying. It's like, hey, cut it off. Like yeah. we're done. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like that, but it was very intentional. And I will tell you, after being on staff there for a year and then coming home back to my home church, I li- it li- felt like the longest service I'd ever been in in my life because it just felt so unorganized. And it wasn't that much longer, mm-hmm. but. Uh, it really taught me on the importance of planning, how you can really plan with purpose and have a lot of impact in your service mm-hmm. and it not be much longer, uh, or excuse me, it can be just maybe a little shorter than than the other church that I'd grown up at. So yeah. I, I think it's important. Yeah, and my in terms of my world, I've been doing a lot more like running and triathlons and, and these like races. And when you go into a race, what I'm learning, it's like you, you gotta have this plan. You gotta have a plan for your pace because you know you get to that starting line and adrenaline takes over and you can just gas yourself out, right? You've got to have a plan for your nutrition so you're not like on mile 24 and you just bonked out. You're like, I got to like crawl the rest of the way. You've got to have a plan for everything, whether it's bike or swimming or anything like that. Um, but what happens is inevitably every single race, something changes and it could be bad, right? Yeah. Um, Maybe you just kind of slow down. Maybe there are more hills on Your the side course. side starts hurting. Yeah, more hills on the course than you imagine. Or you, you're, you're driving, you have like a gel packet, and you're on your bike, and it falls, and you're like, oh, that's gone. Uh, or, or it could be good. Like you feel like, man, I'm just, I'm just feeling it today. My swim was faster. or My miles were like, I'm just doing really well. Uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't plan. It just means that things are going to happen. So when you, when you get together and you plan out your Sunday morning service, it's probably not going to go exactly as you planned. And maybe that's not going to be a great thing. Um, I remember the time when we were trying to baptize people at one of our churches, Justin, the heater wasn't working. So we had to make some, (laughs) we had to make some changes or it could be good. Like great things are happening. So it's important to be flexible. And I do like, I hadn't heard that Eisenhower, uh, uh, quote, but, but it makes sense like in battle and and just life. It's, you got to plan. It's so important, but it doesn't always go how, that how cold way. was the water be honest it was very cold it was yeah. and then we we started getting um we started turning on the faucets and getting like hot hot water and filling it up with buckets and kind of dumping it in that didn't yeah. really do much I, I always put in my employer agreement when i would go, be, go be on staff at a church that your employer it, yeah, agreement. they had to have warm water for the baptisms if not we we, we mm-hmm. got to move it you know for mm-hmm. me yeah so it's, it's an, i didn't know that the deal breaker an empl- employee agreement for churches like that <laughs> But I would have put, you know, no plunging toilets. That, that would have been, been in mind. That should have been first and foremost. <laughs> and maybe a raise once every five years. We should, you know. Yeah, yeah, cost that's, of that's, living. That's another episode. On another the episode. Uh, so we were, we were thinking through, like, why are reasons, you know, what are some reasons that people don't plan? Yeah. Um, and you might be you might be saying, well, we, we don't really plan or maybe we're not super intentional. And here are a couple of reasons we we were uh, looking at some John Maxwell stuff. And, and yeah. I like some of it, not all of his stuff, but, I, but, but I'm, I, I like some of John Maxwell's stuff. And he had some really good reasons for why people don't plan. And we've got a list of four of them yeah. that we'll go through. And maybe as we're, as we're going through this list, people are like, oh, that's me. Like you're gonna feel conviction uh-huh. as we go through this list. <laughs> uh, number one, maybe they don't possess planning skills or knowledge so maybe you just say i don't like i don't know how to, i don't know how to plan and maybe your personality is like yeah, i go by the seat of my pants like, yeah, like just live la vida loca yeah like live 15 live minutes mas. in front of yeah like i don't look <laughs> past 15 minutes in my life right uh i think this is for people that you just haven't like you just never learned how to prioritize your day or to look into uh, you know, to prepare for tomorrow, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, another reason why people don't plan, and this is this is such a Maxwellism, yeah, right? Like yeah. I can hear his voice in my head. And this is one that that if you say, "Oh, you're listening to this episode," and you're like, "Oh, I I know planning's important." Yeah. This is the one that you're like, "Oh, yeah, I don't plan because of this." I'm gonna say it in the Maxwell voice. He's, he's okay. like, "They're caught in the tyranny 
of the urgent <laughs> and they believe that they don't have <laughs> that's a terrible maxwell it, voice by the way you know but, what's funny but is I like i can hear his voice in my head i see a lot of Max, but when i was in college or i listened to sometimes podcasts with him it's like oh it's weird it's always a recording from like the 1980s yeah. it's like kind of crackly and i'm like when was this but it's i mean like i said a lot of it's good so why change it yeah um but yeah they're caught in the tyranny of the urgent and they don't believe they have time or maybe they're just caught in a tyranny so it's like oh i want to plan for a guest speaker to come in so i can take a day off but i don't even know what i'm preaching two weeks from now like i don't i don't know if we're going to be in the middle of a series so i don't yeah. know if i should like i gotta figure that out first and then i can plan and then you just don't figure it out so you don't plan uh, another reason why people don't plan is they you know we don't like the the perceived hassle of planning mm. you ever met a person like man i I, I love the plan, but that's just a lot of work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I've talked to pastors, and you, you and I have both talked to pastors, where they, you know, we talk to them about planning out their sermon series for the year, and that's just like, well, I got to I got to do a three day retreat to do that. Like, mm -hmm. that's just a lot of work. Uh, the last one, last reason why people don't plan, according to John Maxwell, is many people don't plan because the outcome varies greatly. And they say. When I do make a plan, it normally doesn't end up happening. And I can say this is true. I've experienced this mm -hmm. myself. If you're working, if you work for a leader that they do not plan, but but you are a planner, it almost is this gravitational pull to to slowly you sort of not plan yourself because it's every time you do plan something, the leader above you sort of uh, plays swoops in and yeah. just just like a seagull. Yeah. Just poops on over everything, and then flies away, and then flies away, and does undoes all you your plans. Your yeah, <laughs> I, I I've been under a leader like that, and it is incredibly frustrating because you're trying to work hard, right? You're trying mm -hmm. to uh, put in the work, uh, plan, be organized, and they come in and change stuff at the last minute, and you can't do anything about it because hey, they're they're the boss, right? So mm -hmm. I totally totally get that. So we have seven questions. Yes, yeah, seven questions that that we want to pose to you, and and just think about this. Like as as we go through this season, we're gonna give you some ideas, and we're gonna give you um we're gonna give you some maybe some action steps, but we're also going to hopefully ask questions that elicit inside of you this response, and you've got to think about how does this apply to our culture. So as we're planning a Sunday morning service. How does this apply to you? Uh, so, seven questions. And before we get into the seven questions, let me ask you this. So this is maybe the bonus question at the beginning. Mm. For you only. The bonus, the pre. What is the most important part of, the, of a service, generally speaking? Yeah. It, I, it's, it depends. Yeah. Right? If you're at, if you're at a probably um more of like a secret sensitive mega church it's the music because people come because they want the music yeah if you're more at like a bible church it's the sermon okay if you are at maybe more liturgical church it's the eucharist it's the communion at the end so it all just kind of and then there are the churches that are like well all of it's really important we can't like put a put a finger on it what probably isn't is the announcements i don't know if any any yeah. church has ever said the announcements are the most important maybe maybe somebody out there maybe. says that maybe what do you do you have a, do you have a thought you know I, w I was thinking about it I, I think everything you just said is, is correct i think it varies by church and denomination and i i do think the sermon itself because the sermon takes up a lot of time and the sermon is such a f an isolated focal point for the mm -hmm. entire congregation. I do think it has a lot of importance. And so that leads me into this first question is really when you're planning out your service with your team mm -hmm. and your volunteers and and pastors, if, if you are at a church plant or you're a smaller church and maybe you're the only person on staff, not only is it important for you to plan, but I do think it's important for you to bring others into the mix. You shouldn't be the only person planning this out. Mm -hmm. Bring others to the table, allow their input, give them ownership, give them buy-in you know into the plan so to speak and uh, i think it's going to be helpful for you in the long run yeah and, and probably have somebody who's kind of like a like a service director or a coordinator yeah. so like the day of as as a pastor you can just talk to people you can um meet people 
you can concentrate on, on, on prayer, preparing for the message, and you don't feel like you've got to be like, hey, you, you, you're over here, you're over here, or hey, roll that five-minute countdown. Yeah. Um, you've got somebody who's, who's really kind of helping things stay on track. Yeah, I do think if you have a media booth or a media room and uh, there's a pr production element to your service, I do think in addition to someone uh, pushing the lyrics to the screens and working with the sound, I do think a service coordinator would be helpful mm -hmm. to help facilitate that plan. And then maybe I've also seen it at churches where you have someone that's sitting next to the pastor near the front row or mm -hmm. you know, if you're... Um, if your pastor sits in service, the armor bearer, the armor bearer, um, <laughs> that can really help be as a as a go between between the pastor and the service coordinator. So mm -hmm. I do think that can be helpful if that fits your uh, structure at your church. Uh, first question though is when planning your service, what is the theme mm -hmm. of the sermon? Yeah. Or what is the theme of the service? Yeah. I, I, one of the reasons why we've talked so much. I feel like we've talked about this a lot in season two, a lot in season one, is the importance of, of planning out your year, your sermon series for the year, at least six months in advance, mm -hmm. because it allows you to zoom out and see what are your people working through on, on a content level, what, what books of the Bible, what felt needs, what topics. And one of the reasons why I think that's important, because it makes this particular aspect of planning, when you're planning your service, a lot easier, because it in, helps inform just naturally speaking, if you know where this where the sermon is going, if you know what sermon series you're in ahead of time, you can do you can answer the questions that we're going to ask. I think a lot easier oh, yeah. than if than if nobody knows, Pastor, what you're preaching on this Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So if you're like you're going through the Lenten season, uh, and we naturally understand this at Easter Sunday, right? Yeah. Or Advent, you have this theme, you have this text that you're going through, and having that theme there. It, it, it can inform the lighting. It can inform the songs. And that's the second question we have. What songs can we use to support the theme of the sermon? Uh, if you are speaking about um, uh, the reality of sin in the world and the hope of the gospel, using songs to reinforce that. Mm -hmm. If you're preaching from a specific text, maybe you could find songs that utilize some of that imagery and some of that uh, some of that wording or those passages and sing those. That that's that's super important. I I, I was preaching on um, the the wise and foolish builder building their house on the rock, and it was like, oh, that's a great opportunity to end the service by singing uh, on Christ the the solid rock yeah. I stand. And uh, so thinking through that, the third question is, uh, what videos or illustrations can be used related to the theme. So is there something to kind of help people to understand where you're at and to understand where you're going to be in that mindset, right? So if you're talking about, this example, you're talking about pain and suffering, the book of Job, like your your songs probably aren't going to be like this happy, happy, happy yeah. because you're trying to help them to understand the reality of this text. And, and the reality of pain in the world. Have you ever been in a service where the pastor's preaching and it's something like on the book of Job and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they come up, the band comes up and they they start singing like, mm -hmm. you know, something upbeat and I'm yeah. going, man, that's, that's such yeah. a missed opportunity here <laughs> and it's sort of going against I, the grain. Hey, I, ha I, have pastor. A, I have a story, I'm not going to say where, but I was in the service one time and it's... You know, you know. And, and it's it's Easter Sunday. We're talking about the resurrection of oh, Jesus. Man. I mean, it's awesome. It's incredible. The sermon ends, right? And there's this kind of short song. And then someone comes out and they're like, hey, guys, we're getting ready for youth camp. Check out this video. And the video is like, like all this, you know, uh, rap stuff, right? Uh, I'm not cool enough to know all the lingo. It's called a hip hop. Wait. Yeah, right. Yeet. And, and I was like, wow, like whiplash you know what i mean yeah so kind of understanding that because it's like man something was really happening like good stuff was really happening in the service and then it's like oh it's kind of gone yeah there's a Bye. there's a there's an ebb and a flow that happens in a service yeah. right uh when i was in high school i was a songwriter and one of my goals was to be a recording artist and so i was never a great singer 
I was an average singer, but I really enjoyed performing. And so I would watch these VHS tapes of this guy who was like a coach to the Christian stars, right? Mm. And I don't even remember his name. His, his name was Jackson, something Jackson. And he would essentially coach him on crafting a concert that had a nice ebb and flow. And you would never see him, like you're saying, where it's like a somber moment, and then all of a sudden it's like... Yeah. What he would do is say, hey, you need to classify your songs in a level one to five. Five being like fireworks going off, mm -hmm. explosions, like the highest energy you can have, and then one being really, really intimate and soft and somber. And you never wanted to go from a one to a five, right? You, you mm -hmm. sort of had to work back up into it. And so I always remembered that. And I think about that oftentimes, too, as we're planning our services, where uh, the dynamics just don't agree with one another at times. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think it's important for you to, to for us to remember that when we're planning. Another question is, where should the generosity or the offering go in the service mm -hmm. and you know i think it's actually okay that the offering doesn't the offering moment so to speak if you have a generosity moment it doesn't have to happen in the same spot every service yeah well it i mean and there are some churches where they don't even do it every yeah. week maybe at the end they'll say oh yeah hey there's offering uh, there's offering baskets in the back or you can do it online like so kind of just thinking yeah. through that like wh where is that supposed to go and in, in the flow of service maybe it goes after the message maybe it goes before the message and i think one of the reasons why this is important especially if you do have that moment in your service we did a survey where it was like 70 something percent of pastors said they don't prepare anything for a giving talk mm -hmm. they just sort of it's it's impromptu and I know money and generosity is a serious issue for a lot of people. It could be taboo for some people in your congregation. I do think it's important as pastors or uh, if you're having someone do the generosity moment, the giving moment, that they put in the time and they, they prepare some thoughts for that moment. So that moment is is effective, but also efficient with the time. Yeah. Again, you could put it at the end after the sermon. You could put it before the sermon. It just depends on, on really the ebb and the flow of the service that you're planning out. It doesn't have to be in the same spot. And I would say the same is true for the next question is, where should you place the announcements? Yeah. The announcements, I don't think, have to go in the same spot either every week. Yeah, you can kind of move them around. And, and I'll say this too, uh, you don't, I think pa most pastors probably don't need to do the announcements or Please, offering Please, don't every do week. the announcements, yeah. Um, first of all, it gives other people an opportunity to communicate yeah. to the church. It lets them know, that, hey, the, there's a lot of people on staff, or there's people on staff, there's volunteers, there's elders. I think that's good. And then it also saves your voice, so uh, people's attention spans are waning. Yeah. And when you come up, and if you do the offering and then the announcements and then your sermon, they're kind of already checked out. But if you yeah. come up and begin your sermon, I think that, that, that can... Uh, it definitely help. So announcements, and, and I think too, if you do too many announcements, people are just yeah. going to forget. I think um, a general a general rule of thumb is like if if it can apply to like eighty percent of the people in the room, I think it's I think it's good. Or if it's a very special event for a particular, like for instance, like if 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 the kids are going to youth camp and you wanted to highlight that, well, yeah. uh, it, probably a lot of the people in the room are parents, and they might have. You know, kids that are either going to kids camp or going to youth camp. So, do you think something like that's appropriate? How do you feel about video announcements? I feel like that used to be a big thing. I don't know if it is anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Either. I think you change it up. I think you could yeah. do video announcements one week, have a person do the announcements the next week. Whatever you do, I think it's important that you you tell stories and you share the why behind the event. You don't just yeah. promote the event uh, with service time. Don't lead with like, "Hey, we're doing this event." Come check it out. It's on August 13th at 7 p.m. Like, that doesn't really compel anyone. That doesn't make anyone interested. That doesn't make them lean forward, mm -hmm. so to speak. So make sure that you that you do that. And I think, you know, it's important when you're doing your announcements that, uh, again, you you don't want to highlight something that only applies to, to you know, less than 5% of the people in the room mm -hmm. uh, because then you're – effectiveness on 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 you know the attention begins to wane if you have way too many announcements so just pick and choose be selective and then the other thing too is you could do some announcements at the beginning of the service you could mm -hmm. do them at the end just mix and match there's a phrase i don't remember who said it but they said the the higher the predictability the lower the connectivity 
right? So if your service is the same way every single week and you're not, you're doing the same announcements every single week, that, that becomes very predictable for people that attend regularly. So they, they will just check out just naturally. Mm -hmm. So switch it up, move it around. It's going to increase the connectivity and it'll increase, it'll make things a little bit more interesting. Yeah. How do you feel about subliminal messaging? So like during the service, you yeah. just put up the word serve day real quick or during the bumper serve day <laughs> right. and then people do it and then Man. people get done. They're like, yeah, are we having a serve day? I feel like we're having a serve day. It's so like, you didn't even waste an announcement on it. It's like Fight Club. <laughs> uh, when uh, the last question uh, uh, is, uh, when should the greeting oh, happen? Two more, two more, two more, two more. Okay, right. think about when the greeting should happen. I don't know if there's much to say about this. Yeah, right. But but think through um, when does that happen? Beginning of the service, after. And I'll say this as well. I'm thinking of all these things. Is like uh, I've been a part of services. I've done this where it's like uh, worship announcements, offering, sermon. And so at the end of worship, the worship leader prays real quickly. Then the announcements, they pray. And then offering, they pray. And the pastors get up and like, hey, we're about to, to read. Let's pray. And it's not like the prayers are very focused. It's just like real quick off, off the cuff. And so just be kind of thinking about the flow of that. And it's obviously it's not wrong to pray after every one of those sections. But is it just this real quick uh, or is it something that's really directed, uh, focused prayer? So think through that. Uh, and then the last one is, how, how do you, how do we want to close the service? How do you want to close the service? I think you know you could close it on a level five, like I talked about, with high energy, an upbeat song, everyone clapping. You know, have a good day, God bless mm -hmm. you. You could end it with a, a call to action. You could end it with people coming up to receive prayer. You could, you could. And the service, giving uh, you know, congregation some homework, so, so a takeaway, something to do this week to apply what they've heard about mm -hmm. God's word. Uh, but think through, how do I want to close the service? How do we want people to feel when they're leaving? I think it's important for us to ask these questions. And yeah. and to be honest, you know, think through all all the implications on how you close a service, and and you know, if the service is going over. You know, if, if, if you think the service might go over, I think it would be good to communicate that with your mm -hmm. kids, church, your nursery. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I've been in some service where the people are like, man, God is moving. God is, he's in the in the place. And the nursery workers, I mean, it's like, They're hey, like, he ain't here. <laughs> we need some help. We yep. need some help. And, he, and left, I, he left 30 minutes ago. <laughs> and I think just knowing the difference, too, about... Uh, the difference between things going along because good stuff is happening yes, yes. and things going along because the pastor's not playing, they haven't planned ahead, they haven't worked on their message, you're just saying the same things over and over again. And you're just like, like we got to wrap this up because there's kids, they are, they are like wild animals trying to burst out the doors. Man. And if Rent. you want volunteers, hey, you got you to do something. They ran out of goldfish. <laughs> they ran out of goldfish. <laughs> that That is a traumatic animal crackers, goldfish. If those are gone, Ugh. Your leaders are gone. Yep. Uh, There's no hope. Justin, so one thing that we want to do at the end of each episode is kind of one quick takeaway. And if I had to choose one today, I would just say uh, find someone who can help be a coordinator for your service. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who can kind of lead that charge and and be there. And so what that person is doing is, you know, they're, they're making sure that um, – uh, the people who are supposed to be doing announcements do announcements. They're they're looking at the order of service. They're helping out. So if you don't have someone who is doing that for your church, find that person. I think that's a way easier role to fill than like someone who's going to guest preach because this person doesn't have to be on stage. They just have to help coordinate people. They just like to connect people together. So that would be my one takeaway, I guess, for, for today. My takeaway uh -huh. would be... Don't build your kingdom in the video booth. Don't build your kingdom. <laughs> there's, this, there's this crazy <laughs> video online. I was thinking about it. You were talking about video booth. Yes. It's crazy. This pastor going nuts. To nuts. So it's really sad. But yeah. he looks and he's calling out somebody. He's like, he says, don't be building your kingdom in the video yeah. booth. I see you up there trying to build your ministry, your kingdom in the video booth. Yeah, it's it just really this like awkward. country preacher. And, um, and he was... 
he was angry that day. He was so now as you come this joke, I'll see people in the video booth. I'm like, better not be building your king. Was that the same video where he like has the the boy stand up and he's like, listen, mama, he you're his yes. mama, but I'm his pastor. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, what? Like, yeah. yeah, I don't understand what's happening here. It, it's a lot. So I digress. Okay, so your my take main away. takeaway goes back to Maxwell, where he's he said many times before. It's a timeless quote, right? If you fail to plan, plan to fail. Okay. I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with that. Make sure to rate and review us on iTunes. If, you, if you're if you listening to us, yeah. you can also find us on YouTube so you can see our, our wonderful and for faces. Our, and for a fun roller coaster ride, listen at two speed. At two speed. Uh, I Maybe I should talk slower so the two speed is not yeah. as fast. Uh, we would love your support. We've had people reach out, and they had they had a good time on season two. Had a good time on season two as well. I think you're gonna have a good time on season three. If you're a pastor, maybe just uh, send this to another pastor friend. Maybe listen to it, and then over coffee, you know, if you meet over coffee, say, hey, let's talk about some of these episodes when we when we meet. And uh, we'd we'd love to have you on this journey. We're gonna be talking about uh, offering some more. We're gonna talk about volunteers. We're gonna talk about all this stuff. Uh, in the service. I, I, I'm i really excited. We're going to talk about fog. Uh, should you have haze? Fog yeah, we're going to do some stuff like that. So that'd be good. <laughs> going back to the 90s youth group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what's that band, Lifehouse? It was like not a Christian yeah. band, but everybody thought we wanted them. them to be yeah, a Christian yeah, yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Lifehouse and haze. Yeah, this episode brought to you Free by... Free pizza. Bringing me back. Lifehouse. <laughs> Hanging by a moment. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week see you. on Hello Church.